podcast with Alexis Texas, and we have an after dark episode today. I'm excited to have the lovely Nikki Delano on the couch. Hola, mama. Ooh, already talking spicy to me. I love it. I like it. I yeah. want some more on it. For sure. <laughs> Private talk for sure is going to like all your spice. We can't wait to get to know you a little bit more. It's been quite some time since I've seen you. There's so many things have changed since I've seen you. Um, so yeah, let's get let's get down into it. How Absolutely. have you been? What have you been up to? I've been amazing. I have my little dog there, Papa. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. So I've been. Um, you know, I had my show on Vivid for six years. Mm -hmm. They just cut Vivid um, Radio okay. in October. So my flashlight came out two years ago, right before the pandemic. Congratulations. Thank you. Right during the pandemic, actually, two thousand. Um, I've been feature dancing a lot, um, shooting really mo mainly for my only fans. Like I've been like kind of dedicated to that. Like, I feel like that's my, my, not my calling, but like, I love shooting for companies, but I prefer more for my only fans and just picking who I want to shoot with and doing what I want to do. And just, you know, just being me, you know, being the naughty self that I am. Cause you know, for companies we have dialogue and certain things. And I feel like doing my only fans, I could just be my Latina self, my crazy self. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So do you no longer work for any other companies? Are you only strictly doing your only fans? I'm shooting for other companies. Yeah. But mainly it's the majority you do it for your only fans. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. But I feel like, I mean, you did that much dialogue. I feel like for me, I was just one of those people that maybe there's not that, I feel like they just didn't give me a chance, maybe because I really didn't want to push those things. But I was just did gonzo type scenes, which was great because you just go there and fucking it's great. So I feel like you get to be like your BTS like stuff. Like you did that much stuff that you felt like you couldn't be your crazy Latina self. Like I don't see that from you. Like I feel like you're just always such a, a big personality in this little cute little sexy body that I don't feel like because <laughs> anybody could like put you in a box. So even if you were doing dialogue, you know. So it depended, like, if it was, like, a feature movie, like, we done, like, Shakira, like, a bunch of, like, uh, singers. What was your biggest, like, dialogue, like, role that you felt for you that was, like, kind of, like, a lot of dialogue type, like? Probably the Shakira one. Okay. So we had to hire a choreographer to learn a music video. All and right, then, all in. Yeah, and I had to basically learn a whole dialogue. The thing is that she's Latina, so I got to be myself. But when, I, when it comes to, like, the feature stuff, like, besides that big one, um, I had to learn a lot of dialogue and I couldn't really be my Latina self. I have to mm -hmm. be a different role, a different character. So for well, me, that was, it, it's, it's a challenge, but I love it. I yeah. love, I love challenges. Well, it definitely shows the diversity of you and you're doing, I mean, obviously your fans love everything that you do. And I'm sure that carries over even more to your only fans. Yeah, absolutely. So what are, you're still feature dancing. How is that after like the pandemic? Is it different, the same? Is there any kind of like things that kind of strayed you away from coming going back as fully as hard as you did before so for me in the beginning I wasn't going hard and now I'm starting to go back little by little and feature dancing more and more I was a bit scared because I was like you know what if I go here what if I get COVID and then I was like you know what I can't get scared I can't get scared because um I got COVID twice I actually got COVID twice and I didn't even know I had COVID okay. like I had tested for so COVID no symptoms, no no symptoms anything. or anything so I was like you know what I can't be scared my immune is gonna like build up and yeah and now I'm going back little by little. I'm doing about two a month. Okay. So yeah, before I was doing like one every weekend. Every and I'm sure weekend. the more you do it, the more the less scary it gets for me. Like I mean, I, I well in my case I would feel that way because I before I the pandemic happened, I it was supposed to be my last year of dancing anyways. Yeah. And just doing other things, and then I felt like I never really had my goodbye. But at the same time too, I don't know if I really if I needed a goodbye because if it would have happened. I think maybe sometimes things just happen for a reason. Absolutely. But a lot of the reason to me thinking on it was like, do you go back and like, I'm so fan friendly. Like I'm very like hugging and we take, you know, they want to touch my ass obviously. So, you know, yeah. if you're nice about it, I'll let you touch it. Just don't grab it. Exactly. But you know, one of those things it's where, um, how do you go back to full on? Like, you know, you don't know where these people have been. Like, you mm -hmm. know, we've been in this whole masked up type of world and not that I'm like the craziest germaphobe, yeah. but you start to think of those things a little bit different. Absolutely. In, and we're in a money, a cash industry, which is crazy these days. Cause you don't really see that in either. And it's dirty. Yeah, you know? <laughs> absolutely. So for me, when I got back into it, I wasn't doing dances at all. No dances at all. Like I was, okay. I didn't want to get too close. So to you people. have boundaries of what's absolutely, what you're in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Boundaries is a must because it's like, like I said, not that we didn't have them before, but as yeah. far as like, again, what you're okay with 
in the like having your fans you know kind of thing absolutely yeah the boundaries was a big thing and like I'm very hands-on bringing people on stage you know just going wild and I kind of set a little bit of a boundary where I wasn't bringing anybody on stage I was kind of distancing myself not to the point where I'm not like you know up close and personal but like I wasn't going full on throttle Mm -hmm. just because I was I was kind of scared and that was my whole thing about it. So now little by little, I'm dancing more and more. Not like before, though. Not like every single weekend. I don't think I could do every single weekend. I'm not built for that anymore. I've done it for so many years. I think it's been like 10 years now I've been yeah. doing feature dancing. Time flies when yeah. you're having fun. I definitely, you know, I miss it sometimes, but I don't miss certain things about it. Yeah. I feel like, you know, the travel, a lot of people don't realize that, Um, it's not as glamorous as some people try to make it be, you know, and not that I need all this glamour or anything like that. Um, but it's just like what you, you know, you, you have a different way of living sometimes. So now, and that it's like, you know, sometimes I'm going to stay home with my dogs and yeah, exactly. I I like it, but I definitely kind of, you know, thinking about going back, um, some way and maybe, you know, popping up at Exotica and doing my twerk contest that I, you know, I did for them for so long because I like the hosting aspect. Yeah. Um, I'm just not exactly sure yet, but are you doing any of those? conventions or so I did Washington DC I want to do Miami for sure okay. um and Chicago so for right now Chicago and Miami Exotica yes we'll see about the others but when's the last Exotica you've gone to mm, I don't even know I mean it's, it's been before the pandemic for sure yeah. yeah I mean I used to go to all of them from the very beginning that's why it's so weird not to have some kind of interaction absolutely but again still not knowing you know and now again the world's opening back up so much more now which is great um you know and now it's all of those things like in our lifetime everyone's gonna get COVID you know it's like yeah flu. you just have to you know everybody's your body has everybody to get fights to it. it a little bit different than others, you know, and other pre-existing conditions, you know, it is real, you know, nobody's Absolutely. saying nothing about that. It's just how yeah. you move and operate now differently. It's like a new, the new normal it's of cr- what's going on. It's crazy with the COVID because I know people who actually gotten into comas and gotten sick and I've known people who know people that passed away. Yeah, it's and unfortunate. Then, and then for others, not like myself, I didn't feel anything at all. So, you know, it, it, COVID is a, it's a legit thing. It's, it's real and it's out there and it's all about your immune system and you just have to take care of yourself eat healthy and for us on the road it's really hard like they don't understand we go to bed so late mm-hmm. our eating schedules are off sleeping schedules are off and it's it's it's, it's not as glamorous as you say for like sure. and that's it for is. me is what I realized taking that time because everyone had to I'm like oh I not that I wasn't healthy but I definitely wasn't healthy I didn't have a routine of yeah. what that healthy lifestyle was and now I do so I'm like ah oh, there's certain things I'm not willing to give up yeah. you know and I love my podcast so I love having people here like yourself and getting to know all these things a little bit more but you know I love that you're still out there and you know doing your show differently but on your terms which is great you know there needs to be more people like that to do that so I'm happy that the fans are still getting big booties like yours yeah it's not as big as Alexis's but it's still there I'm petite with a big booty can we see your big booty oh, you want to see my big I booty see your okay big booty. let me get up okay. it's been so long I want to you know you're just like I said you're so petite and great in these all these little packages should I take it down I mean you can tease us you don't have to always you know put it, you know, I just you know but we love it. We lo- this is the after dark. We never know what's going to happen here. I love that my big booty guests, you know, come here. There's, there's sizes of big booties. So let's talk about, you know, you said you had your radio show. Yes. I did have a radio show on, on Vivid once upon a time. I was on your show booty. before. Yes, yes booty I was. talk. Um, and it was crazy because it kind of, I never knew at that time either that I wanted to do a show or anything like that. But I talk a lot. Everyone tells me in my comments I talk a lot, but it's what's great. It's just like I have a lot to say and I want to get that out of people as well. So how was your show, like the ending of it? Like what did, why did they cancel? Did you well, it know wasn't, prior to, like, did you always know you wanted a radio show? How did that happen for you? So I did it for six years. They didn't cancel my show specific. They canceled the, the, the entire Vivid. Oh, okay. They sold Vivid. Because I thought that they like moved to like somewhere. They moved across the street. To oh, a okay. different studio. Okay, I thought it was like a different state, but this is all no, like no, this no, is all no. like a, like third, fourth party information. Yeah, yeah, they moved across the street, but no, no, no. So then, um, in October of last year, they canceled the entire Vivid. They sold the station, okay. and yeah, they took it off the air. So my oh, I show, had a good run. yeah, it was actually really fun. I enjoyed it. What was I your premise it. of your show? Mine was just being Latina, just talking. Like I'm really good at dirty talk. Okay. So for me, so you love and you embrace the whole Latina vibe. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I love that. It's just like you know, it's just in your blood. Can you give us some Latina dirty talk for us? And you're such a, you know, I know you haven't had your show, but we're here I at know. private talk. 
hola papi, ¿cómo está mi amorcito? Oh, te quiero follar, mi amorcito, te quiero besar, oh, te quiero tocar y besar. Oh. <laughs> she can go on for a long time I'm sure yes. I, I know some of the things but I don't know but all of you out there if you're not translating what she's saying right now what is it <laughs> that you hear you're missing out you're if you're Latina you know exactly what I'm you saying know it. I'm you know I have Latina in me but I don't speak like fluent Spanish you're Puerto Rican too I'm Puerto Rican yes but I just my parents they just didn't talk it like they would talk it when we weren't supposed to know what was going on so you know like if you speak slow i can but fast no can't understand it it's a shame i definitely probably should tap into that a little bit more my um, parents didn't speak spanish well they spoke it but they didn't teach me if it wasn't for my grandmother she's the one that actually installed it in me and she's like you know you're latina papi and you have to know Spanish. It's in your culture. It's in your blood. And if you don't know Spanish, shame on you. So she's the one that taught me. She That's good, though. There's so many things, you know, to be bilingual is really, you know, it's great. Like, it gets a lot of things happening for you. A lot of things. <laughs> How many times do you think in your lifetime you've had sex? Oh, my God. If this you gotta question. you got to put a number on it. Oh, my goodness. Maybe a couple hundred times. A couple hundred times with all yeah. the porn scenes, well, all your personal life, because all the times from you started. Before I got in the industry, I really didn't have a lot of sex. I had, like, my partners. And then in the industry, you know, there's always, like, the, the main dudes. We, we we're not talking with. about people. We're talking about how many times. Oh, how many Times. times. Oh my because god! When that, I when can't even when say. When you have a partner, you're fucking a lot. You be are, I mean? and then you like fucking. So yeah, um, hence why you got into porn later on. Great, but not people. Time. Oh my gosh, maybe is there a ballpark? I don't honestly. <laughs> I can't even tell you. Like, what's yours? I can't, honestly. I mean, say if I have you my. You show me yours. I'll show you mine. What are we playing? Maybe <laughs> over a thousand times. I mean, because like you say, with your partner, you you have sex a lot. So I can't really say. I really Mine's don't definitely know. Definitely more than a thousand. I yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? I um I thought about this question the other day, and I just thought it was really great to bring to the show. Yeah, it's a good Ex question, and actually. Especially because you know this is the after dark episode, and we've done porn scenes, and that multiplies from a lot of people in the regular world out there who. Yeah. Yeah. Know that we are having sex obviously more frequently but again sometimes it's still not multiple people it's like a whole little small group yeah furthermore but we're still we fucking a, small, a lot yeah like i remember when i first started in the industry i probably worked six days a week like so i fucked six days out of that week and yeah. probably the seventh too but it wasn't on film like you know who knows yeah but that's a lot that adds up and then i've had partners prior to before porn and I fucked a lot I would probably say mine I'd have to say 500,000 range like probably. okay so then mine like, has to be <laughs> up there as well too like it has I'm to be up sure. there it's probably more I'm being modest but I'm like hmm. I don't know mine's is up there because I mean I love I sex a lot. I yeah mean, there's nothing wrong with fucking absolutely it's not. just sex like what well, later on like you know I don't do scenes now so it's like finding people to fuck that you actually like fucking it's a little harder now yeah are you not shooting for your only fans I only do solo stuff for okay my only gotcha fans. yeah so gotcha. I don't haven't done anything with a man on there I think there may have been a blowjob scene yeah the lucky winner, Mr. Jules Jordan, me and then uh, Nikki Benz. Nice. You can find that clip if you don't. With Nikki Benz? Already, yeah. I shot so. with Nikki and um, Daisy Marie. It was like a threesome, her and I. Nice. Um, us three girls. And we shot like two scenes together for our OnlyFans. It was hot. Awesome. Super I like hot. That. So what yeah. do you do on your OnlyFans? Everything? So I Any? do um, girl, girl, three-way girl, girl, blowjobs, boy, girl. Um, I interact a lot, like a lot of sexting on there. Um, I have, that's about it on there. I mean, I go, I do a lot of, a lot of shooting on there. Um, I haven't done like a GB on there, which is gangbang, um, DPs or any of that stuff, but I have. Have a, you done those up for other companies? For, um, Elegant Angel. Okay. For my own, uh, Nikki Delano, a feature movie. So, awesome. Yeah. Very cool. I've done that. Yeah, my first GB I was crazy. That. I did that. Yeah. How, why was it crazy? Describe us what, uh, why was your gangbang so crazy? So for me, going into it, honestly, I was so nervous. Like, I was so, so nervous. And by far, I think that was my best scene ever. By but far. But nervous? Okay, let's talk about it. Because, you know, when you do anal, you can't really be nervous. And so I was, you were, oh, so they all fucked you in your ass? Well, no, it was like DP, you know, like, you know, DP, mouth, hands, you know, it's like a mixture of things. 
I mean, I had a gangbang too, but I didn't have those. So I, I mean, you act like it's like on the menu that McDonald's and I'm supposed to know these things. No, that's, I mean, yeah, yeah. but, but did that mean the only one of the people on there or did they all? No, not all, not all. It was kind of crazy. Cause that it's, would make me nervous. Yeah. Yeah. It because wasn't like, all. I know like before, like when I'm being in big scenes, I'd be like one of the other people. And then there'd be like, there'd be one or two people that would switch, say either doing the DMP or the anal. Yeah, yeah. And then other things would happen. But you know, sometimes when you're doing those big scenes, sometimes girls will go all in and some girls like it. I'm not a big anal queen. Yeah. I like it when I'm really into it and I've done yeah. this, you know, those scenes and I know, but to know that maybe five guys are going to do it, I may be a little scared. Yeah. Um, my scene was with, uh, okay, Danny Mountain, Mr. Pete, John Strong, Marcus Dupree, <laughs> and Mick Blue. And all so great, all great, all people. top, top performers. And they all know what they knew Yours what they were doing. Way better than my gangbang. My gangbang, I couldn't even tell you their names. I like, I think I was. They knew yeah. what they were doing, so they all like. They, they definitely knew. What they, were they doing. knew what they were doing. Um, they all didn't partake, obviously, in anal. Like, like myself, I'm not an yeah. anal queen. Like you say, I have to be into it in order to do it. So for me, I have to be into it. I have to be willing and wanting to do it with the partner. Like, there's some performers I have no chemistry with, and it's like, oh, it's like kind of painful, honestly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna admit to do it. I've still, had. Do you still fake it and make it get done because you're a professional, or like, I honestly, you're, you're just I pick, like, mm. I pick my talent now. Like, okay. I pick the talent who I want to shoot anal with, and if it's just, it's been a while since I've shot sure anal. I know who was in your ass that scene. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen it, but if I had just guess those people, I'm sure. MD? No. No, we would know. What's the quickest you've ever orgasmed? Oh, my goodness. Okay, the quickest I've ever orgasmed, probably like in a minute. A minute? Was a minute. it from yourself or other partner or? From a partner. Okay. Yeah, from a partner. What was I'm one? blushing right now. What I'm blushing. I don't know. This was like. Why uh, does that make you blush? How funny. No, no. We just no. talked about anal and gangbangs and I'm talking about your quickest or Yeah. It's because it was before porn. It was more of an intimate thing. Okay. You know, like, okay, like we shoot with the same performers over and over, but this was prior. Um, I wasn't as experienced in, you know, the sex world. And so you were fi figuring out your orgasms, like yeah. how you, how your body works. Like Absolutely. Like, so, okay, so it's definitely memorable. So Absolutely. you just had a flashback of, like, memory lane. It was, I think I was 18 years old. 18 or 19 years old. Um, I was in college, and um, this, this per particular person that I was with, we were always shooting with, you know, condoms, and we were just, but the first time we shot without it, you know, our, we, we took our time and then... Um, what do you mean shot? You mean it fucked? Fucked. We fucked. Oh, I'm like, I, I'm, you were not in porn yeah, yeah, we, we, we do not talk about... We, this. We, like, we, we had sex. A minute. Are we all trying to be in porn, Orlando, when you're 18? I'm like, wait, I thought you said. No, we had sex and, um, yeah, when we took it off for the first time, it was just... It was more of an intimate thing for me. So it was the first time I, I kind of like, you know, was so really... it was the first raw dog situation? Kind of, Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And it was really intimate. So for me, that was very, I love the intimacy part. Like, I, I, I love the shooting. Emotional, like, yeah, connection. Yeah, the connection, the chemistry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The chemistry for me is everything. If there's no chemistry, it's just, it's cool. It's still fun. But chemistry for me, it really gets me going. It gets me it orgasming. It gives you another height of what an orgasm can reach. Like, you can always come. Yeah. But if you, like, Really, really orgasm, I feel like, is a whole other, like, dimension of things. Absolutely. Orgasming? If you can make me orgasm, I give it to you. I give it. <laughs> I give is it, it to you. Is it hard to make you orgasm? Uh, I'm not going to say That was a very, it. like, uh. uh okay. Uh, I would say 50-50. I would say 50-50. 50-50. Explain to us, please. Like, for me, like, my partner's... I in want the truth! I do want the truth. Don't give us a bullshit answer. <laughs> like, my partner's in real life, obviously, they can make me orgasm. Like, my partner's in real life. Not every single time. Is that a disclaimer? But I think it's... Because the intimacy thing, the more of the chemistry thing. Um, on camera, obviously, I've orgasmed. But in real life, like... Everyone, well, we shoot for like a company or for a movie. Sometimes we're in some uncomfortable positions, and sometimes it's, it's not as, as glamorous as it is, and um, it's kind of hard to orgasm. But like, if you have chemistry with the person, then you might orgasm. And I've had, I've had, but I orgasm with my partners, meaning off camera. Basically, if I'm dating sometimes someone, sometimes work is work, and sometimes other days are better at work. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, like that. But for me, I had to get to a point where. 
I, I mean, I like sex. Obviously, that's why I was an adult performer. But I also knew my body so well that if I was going to fuck on camera, then I was going to get mine. Like, yeah. it didn't matter who you were. And I'm sorry, that sounds horrible. But I love it, though. But I mean, the honesty. But for me, it's like, it's like the spank. And I'm so visually... Um, I could turn myself, like, I don't need to, like, see something. I can, like, think about something to, like, make myself have dirty thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, anything about what that person that I'm fucking, I can find something about you that's going to make me come. Absolutely. I'm going to make, you know what I mean? So, I'm like, okay. I'm getting mine. Like, why do it, though? It's like, you know, because at one point, you know, especially, like, when internet came around, it's like, let's take a thousand pictures of the same fucking thing. And, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Great. I understand. Not really. But, okay, the process of people, the process of Our pretty girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it comes to a point where it's, like, you feel like a robot. That I was, like, if I'm going to do this, I also am going to get mine. Like, yeah. I'm not just a fucking fuckhole. Like, and that's what it was, the whole thing. And that's kind of also, too, why I kind of exited left right that's, i don't know what the fuck where he's right whatever way whatever way you went my way yeah, i went that way absolutely that's why i shoot now mainly for my only fans because for me i feel like i can orgasm i can like pick who i want to shoot with and do what i want to do and just just more creative control absolutely i feel like that that creative control it gives me i mean i can always picture something nasty and naughty and just fuck for sure but like i feel like picking the partner and picking the scenario and just like the gonzo i feel like i love the gonzo gonzo for me and is me fun as well and you know and that's why for me I have no bad anything to say about any company, especially because I had a really great career. I had nothing bad happen. I think it all really happened the way that I wanted to. And just, you know, life, you know, is why the things, you know, turn, why I'm not doing things anymore. But I feel like it, the industry has just changed now. Like, it's you know, changed so a lot. therefore, because we didn't have those options, like an OnlyFans where we had the control, there was websites, but we still didn't know exactly what to do. You know, there's still like a lot of people. The middle people. So now it's like OnlyFans, it makes you our one on one access where I feel like it gives us more content creator control where you can be your own Absolutely. you know, director and not it not be and not fail. Absolutely. Because it's like what your fans want to see of you. And we who knows the best, we do. Absolutely. We know our bodies. We know what turns us on and, and for me just being in control of the scene and be knowing who I'm going to be fucking and, and what I'm going to be doing. And just like you say, shooting on camera, like you find anything in dirty. Like for me, there's been times where I've had like partners that I've had massive chemistry with on, on camera. Like, whoa, I'm like, I'm falling in love. <laughs> but then there's times. The ecstasy of the orgasm. Yes. Like, oh, wait, is this? Oh, no, I'm just dick drunk, girl. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, like, you know, once you take a shower off, you realize this is not who you want to be with. Them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, my God, what were they thinking? <laughs> dick but drunk. That's yeah, a dick drunk. Really it, it is a thing. It is such a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens more, I feel like, when you first get into the industry. Like, for me, I started dating somebody in the industry when I first got in, and I felt like... That was in the industry? Yeah. I'm not going to say names. I'm not going to say names. But, like, um, yeah, the dick drunk thing is... It's a real thing. Girl, I stayed, it is a I real still thing. Married, I stayed married way too much long, way too long because of good sex and, you know, things. I get it. You know, it's one of those things. That's why it's like, which is... What is it really do I want? Do I like the dick or do I like the dick and the things? Which you could have both, but at those times, you know, being 20 something young, dumb, and full of cum, yeah, this yeah. takes a lot of precedence. Yes, mommy. You're like everything else will happen. No, it doesn't. You know, when it's grown up, you can get, you know, all the things. And yes. it just makes it that much more healthier orgasms. I agree. I yeah. feel like the older you are, you know your body a lot more. And I feel like being in porn, I know my body and I know what I love and what I don't like. So for getting a porn, like, like in the beginning, I was just like going with the flow. And then I learned so many different positions. I was like, what? Are you for kidding sure. me? Like pile Enjoy driver. I yeah. Hate, I, that's the worst one. I'm so tiny. Girl, I don't do that one. You like doing that? I'm, I'm, I'm tiny. I love it. Does that it. mean you love it? I, I love it. I mean, I'm, like, I'm little. I have did it one time. It was because Naughty America was like, a fan told you you have to do this. I'm like, okay, shout out. Get me out of this. I just, for me, it does not. I'm too big of a girl. Like, I don't think that it just... And it's, like, weird to get in that situation. Like, you could be flipped around in that situation. Like, I see where it's, like, it's sexy. Me, nobody's flipping me around. I mean, I have been flipped around. But it's just... I'm a spinner, technically. I mean, I have a big butt. But I'm technically, I'm, I'm five feet. I'm tiny still. So they can just flip me around, throw me around in the air. Just, just flip me around. I just need to find bigger, stronger men, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's why. You probably... <laughs> but you know your positions. You know what you love, so... Yeah. For sure. I think it's definitely the angles, too. Like, my yes. my vagina definitely doesn't really care for that angle. I don't think I've ever came that. I never gave it a try. You know, maybe. 
You probably need to start <laughs> trying again. <laughs> I, <laughs> doggy's good too. Doggy's good. <laughs> I do like it. It's not my favorite, but I do definitely. What's like, your favorite? Like, What's your absolute like, favorite? Mm, you know, it goes between like a whole like you know boring enough mission like cowgirl. I was gonna say missionary because you, you know, know or you even like kiss. a side mish type thing. I'm really into like the closeness, but getting like you know still holding out. I'm like doing motions, you know, if you wouldn't know what that feels like. But yeah, but I definitely like to be bent over. It's just a time and place thing, but it's not my favorite go to. But I yeah. feel like because of my ass is so big, they want to see it and take it for a ride. So I'm like, fine, have your fun back there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be back. I'll be it. back here when you're ready to come <laughs> yeah. talk to me. I love that. It's sexy. Have you ever hooked up with a friend's sibling? A friend's sibling. Um, <sighs> I'm trying to think. Honestly, Dun, dun, <laughs> Does that dun, help you out? Dun, dun. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Nope. What is your worst hookup horror story? Worst hookup horror story. Okay. Um, we were having anal sex, and his dick was very. It was very. It was kind of small. Like I feel like when I do this anal, not, this is not the story it, direction I would thought it was going. <laughs> this was not what it was going. Yeah. Like. No. I feel like okay. For anal sex, your butt can open up more than vag because you know you have your pelvis and everything. But it's also but for, if you're really into them. Yeah, it's true. But this is this was a horror story. His dick was wasn't as big, and it felt like he was poking me with a knife. And it, had my you butt. fucked him prior to? Did you know what his dick looked like? <laughs> no. So you just went res- like this was like- this is on camera on camera oh, okay, on camera. Okay, okay, okay. You mean off camera? Yeah, off camera. Okay. I'm like uh, what? I'm like how did you not? I don't know. Let's see. Like, okay. You do not seem the person who's like in a one night stand. Yes, stick it in my ass, sir. No. Okay. Let's that? see. Probably my worst uh, fuck would probably be with a guy that I thought his dick was going to be bigger. He was he so was a bodybuilder. He was a bodybuilder, and this was uh, before porn. Okay. And um, w- when it came down to it. His dick was tiny as fuck. He just wanted to eat my pussy the entire time. And I was like, why does he want to eat my pussy so much? But you hadn't seen his dick yet. I hadn't seen his dick uh, yet. So when we had sex for the first time. he was good at Well, was he good at it? He was okay. <laughs> but the fact that his dick was so <laughs> tiny, I was expecting a little bigger, you know? It was pretty itty bitty. But I mean, people who are like, like in I don't, this case, usually are good pussy eaters. Because they have to have one or the other. Like, you yeah. can't have a... Uh, you know like, yeah 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 oh. it wasn't okay his pussy eating was i'm gonna give it a five that's horrible i'm gonna give it a five that's so horrible. it wasn't the best it wasn't the best that no. wasn't horrible i feel yeah. like i don't know yeah most guys aren't really great pussy eaters yeah like, it's really hard to find some good ones and when you do you just gotta keep they stay around I, that's why i, I married one yeah so <laughs> when you when you eat pussy you have to play with the clit like some guys just go for the hole you have to they stay, don't know what the stay the clit. Is. they yeah. don't know what any of that means because honestly i i attested to because a lot of people unfortunately they, they don't communicate Absolutely. they don't say anything it's like you're okay to fuck this person but you won't talk to them I'm yeah. like, you're inside of me. Let's talk about it. Not to have a whole full-on fucking conversation. Communication is key. But if I don't like something, I'm not going to keep not, like, I'm not going to keep you doing it. Like, but I also don't like to, like, direct either. Because yeah. I feel like people are like, you know, they, they get the whole, like, they're like, what, well, what can I do? I'm like, I'm not here to tell you what to do. If you can't yeah. fuck me and make me, like, do this, this is your trial. If you, Absolutely. This is, this is One time thing, if you're not going to be good at it, after that, I never had sex with that guy again. And I liked him. I mean, him. how could you? Yeah, you really I liked him. Because, I mean, sex is important. It's not everything, but it is important. And you know, what are you going to do with that? I feel like sex is very important in a relationship. It, it's very, I feel like it's, if it's not good, if it's not great, I feel like then it, it's, it's, it's a huge factor. It's a huge factor for me. So you're a big dirty talker. You yes. have the whole radio show. You have all this like, sexy talking to us earlier on Truth With Toxic. But do you really do that in your personal life? I do talk dirty. So I can't help it. I just okay. can't help it, honestly. The porn just, didn't make you be dirty. You were already a dirty talker. I was already a dirty talker. Oh, Nasty, I like the octave dirty of, talker. Your, of your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Always a dirty talker. For me, it's just, it just, I just spit it out. Do you like your partner to dirty talk back? Or do you Honest, just like to talk? Honestly, if the partner's into dirty talk, they can talk dirty. If they're not into it, they don't have to talk dirty. As long as I feel like I'm achieving what I want, like it, it just comes out. Like it just, it's a natural, a natural thing for me during sex. So it, they don't, they can, they can, they cannot. You know, for me, it has anyone goes. ever told you to shut up? Uh, <laughs> maybe one or two times. One or two times, like oh, you're talking too much. Slow down. 
I'm like, <laughs> no, thank you, sir. I like to talk. Fuck you. I have high <laughs> energy during sex. Like, I have high energy. Really? So. I would never believe that, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have high energy in life, which is great. You gotta keep it up. What's your biggest turn off in bed? Uh, my biggest turn off in bed would be um, bad hygiene. Bad, bad hygiene. hygiene. You have to have good hygiene in bed, honestly. Like, for me, you have to have good hygiene and smell good. And, you know, I think it's, I think that's a goal for everyone. Have you ever been rejected for sex yourself? Um, mm, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no, honestly. I don't think I have. I don't. I mean, you don't, I mean, if you have, I mean, you think you would. No, no, ever. I've never been rejected for sex. No, no, no. Never. So any, yeah. like, you've ever tried, like, you know, hooking up with somebody, you've always 100%. I can feel the, I can feel the body language. I can read body language. I can read someone's aura. So you wouldn't aura. even, like, go that other level if you didn't feel that it was already, like, in the bag. Absolutely. Kind of thing. Absolutely. Weirdest place you've ever masturbated? The weirdest place I've ever masturbated. Oh, my God. Probably <laughs> Runyon Canyon. <laughs> Just like on a hike, and you had to take a, you had to take a pit stop, or was this for your OnlyFans? It was for my OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm sweaty, guys. It's funny. <laughs> I'm like dying up here. No, it's it was hilarious. It was for my OnlyFans. Hi, Benzino. This is my little dog. They probably can't see it. him because he's so low down it's there. Okay, he's up. Oh, doggies are always welcome. <laughs> but um, probably Runyon Canyon. Um, did at the movies. Like, did anybody like on a plane? Okay. I'm just I'm just going with it. You um, masturbate on a plane? Yeah. The, like was, now was this for like no no this is for myself that because was just, like i was like, just fuck you bitch this is, i gotta go i think I, I was on a plane and i was just masturbating for like three hours straight like now with covid you, you mean, there's nobody like in the middle fingering yourself no or like playing you with like, my clit like okay. i would pull like a coat and stuff and just like <sighs> i'm just <laughs> trying to be quiet how many times i don't know but a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> how long was this flight Nikki? <laughs> <laughs> it was from the east to the west coast <laughs> where was your dog he wasn't with me he wasn't with me he was you're like hi was, papa he was like he was fast asleep he didn't give a fuck what mommy was doing i was yeah i was two wines in and i was in my jacket yeah a great time come here papa oh look he's sitting on your foot <laughs> oh my gosh i'm dying this is too funny um, let's see making out or cuddling making out or cuddling i'm a big cuddler i love to kiss too kissing is great but you know what cuddling for me or well, my partner i love to cuddle like i'm a big cuddler and I like kissing too. Fuck. You like Can I just do both? Big spoon, little spoon? Um, what do you mean, big spoon, little spoon? Are you big spooning your your partner when you when you cuddle at night? I like to be like my head <laughs> on top of their chest, you know, kind of like I like to sleep like pretty much all night on their chest. <laughs> so you, you're definitely your big spoon. I'm a big spooner. I mean, I would imagine you're a very tiny lady, like you know, a little Polly Pocket, and yeah. you know, it seems like you have you like bigger partners. I love, I love the Polly Pocket thing in school, like. I'm little Polly Pocket because I've always been the shortest one. Always in front of How the old class. Are you? I'm glad that you know that reference because I mean, I'm getting older these days. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people are like, what? I used to love Polly Pocket. I don't want to reveal my age. How, what year were you born? <laughs> I was 85. I don't care. I'm, I'm 86. Great. Okay. I'm 86. I'm 86 years young. I'm like fine wine. I get better at time. I feel like, yeah, yeah. With, with age, everything gets better. With For age, sure. I definitely better. feel better. I mean, Come here, Munchkin. If I wish I had like, you know. He loves you. He loves Hi, you. <laughs> He's like, play with me. <laughs> we have a guest host, a co-host. I've never had one here at Private Talk After Dark, but sometimes, you know, we're going to just do it. Shower sex or car sex? Shower sex for sure. And car sex. Fuck. Why for okay. sure? Because some people definitely don't like the water friction. Not I always. like, okay, I mean, shower sex, I mean. I like to start. But I like to finish in the car. In the car, it's it's like um it's kind of like you can give roadhead and then you can fuck like it's kind of like an, a spontaneous thing. And then in the shower, it's like after are sex, you you're fucking? gonna fuck again. Like are you're gonna you? put one leg up and then you're gonna fuck in the shower. Tell us, tell us, Nikki, so, how are you gonna do it? Yes, yeah, so I feel like it's uh, for the the car. I like both honestly, but for the car, it's more spontaneous. Okay. More spontaneous. The shower, I feel like that's a uh, most people like they kind of after sex if they're really into each other and if they're partners, they're gonna fuck in the shower regardless. But you know. regardless, save water. You know? <laughs> what would you say is your most embarrassing sexual experience? Embarrassing. Did we talk about this one? Embarrassing. I think um, uh, probably biting gonna, a dick you, accidentally. You bit it? Why did you bite? I think I was going so hard on the dick and spitting on the dick that, you know, I spit think. Spit it on the dick. Spit it on the dick. I, hey, <laughs> spit it on the dick. Spit it on the dick. Hey. I think I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was hungry or something. 
<laughs> oh my god! I was like, "Fuck! I'm, it's time to was eat." Was this in your personal life or your or personal life? Oh personal yeah, you're life. like, yeah, girl. I was <laughs> yeah, personal life. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm sweating over here because I'm laughing so fucking much. I love it. You're awesome. Oh, that's hilarious. You're like, I was hungry. You're like, see, this is what happens. You don't feed me. You know, it's yeah, you, you gotta know. feed me and you gotta fuck me right. That's the two favorite things, especially women. You have to feed your man and you gotta fuck your man right because that's when you know he'll stay hey, baby. <laughs> who is your first celebrity crush um first celebrity crush would be probably ricky martin were you masturbating to ricky martin and i love maluma um yes i was i i yeah uh, fuck yes you said, fuck yeah, yes yeah, yeah. yeah maluma is my 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 ultimate colombian crush have you been to his concert um i haven't been to his concert no but i've seen it i've seen it on tv i've seen it you know on our phones but i mean instagram i suck at instagram yeah. dinner life. date or movie date um probably a dinner date because you could talk to your partner i feel like the movie it's more of like you're just watching you're kind of snuggling and cuddling like you know side by side kissing um but i i, I like to talk i want to talk to my partner i want to get to know them so i feel like the first date should be a dinner date get to know them better and then the second date could be you know a movie date you don't like to. You don't like to pick. You like to have both. <laughs> I know. I can never pick. I can never pick. I want to have. But all I of love it. it. You know. We got, why limit yourself? You yeah. shouldn't limit yourself. You Absolutely. Know? I like that you have explanations for them both, though, and reasons of which is going first. Because I am the same. I had somebody try to take me on a date, and it was a movie date, and I, I just hated it. Really? Because I can't, I can't talk to the person. Yeah. I had he, like, and I'm very old school, so it's like. I wanted to be like picked up. No, nothing like that. It was like I met. I like yeah, to met, meet him there. I, yeah, oh, I wow. drove in traffic. It was a lot of red flags that I was just like, yeah. "Why am I doing this?" But at the time, I was also like, "You know what? This is a practice thing. Whatever. Let's figure this out." But I also committed to myself that I was going on an adventure. Yeah, and I didn't know if it was be good or bad, but I was like, "You know what? I'm I'm here for it." Absolutely, it was an experience. I did have a great time. Horrible date. Yeah. You it know, wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? You just but reminded me of a, something. But I learned a lot of lessons that day. I learned that when, you know, you have a gut feeling of something and it doesn't, you know, you should speak up more. You reminded and me about something about a date uh, at the movies. Remember, I went to, I went on a date. This was a lot younger. And he made me pay for my, my ticket. So I, I sat down. I sat down. <laughs> and then I was like, I have to go to the restroom. <laughs> Took my purse. I got up and I left. I was like, that You're was like, a red flag uh, for me. Yeah. I mean. But good for you knowing early on. Yeah. Like, like I was know, like. Why? It's a date, and then I'm paying from the date. Okay, it's okay. It's the 20th century. It's 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 a different era. But back then, I'm like, you know, even then and now, like I feel like it's, it's, it's still old what school. Era, exactly. Yeah, I like the I already knew part, and I know, like for me, it's like I'm not settling. Yeah, and dating's really hard here in LA. And it just, is or just in general. Yeah, but I also too is like I have standards. I, I agree, I'm girl. Not going to like you know, and the dating thing is really like they don't try, and yeah. it's like for me, it's like I will try the way but yeah. i also too if it's like lack of i'm like i have to go I, yeah. I could take myself on a better day and be like just fine I, that's why and i started why early like, that's why i knew from the get-go from the beginning that i knew my standards and when that first date i was like i think i was 17 i knew from 17 when i went on a first like, date. gotta go sorry i didn't even tell him I'm, like, I'm going to the restroom and i never came back and he's texting I me and all that. that yeah so hmm. sorry dude <laughs> sorry you're probably watching my porno right <laughs> What's the wildest place you've ever had sex? The wildest place I've ever had sex. You've masturbated a lot of places. Um, but have you actually had sex like in crazy places? Uh probably I have I've had sex in many places. The wildest many, many place places. probably in a movie theater in the back of a mo back of a theater a couple per times. Per a couple times personal life? Personal life and also I've actually like, given a blowjob for my OnlyFans, but I, I, I kind of did it when it, the OnlyFans thing, yeah, I did it, I did it. Never, yeah. Never, yeah, never, never mind, but it. I did it there, yeah. Never <laughs> got caught? Uh, no, never, never got never. caught. How would you describe what an orgasm feels like? It's like your body's tingling and all your senses are just coming together and it's like, you're just basically, you're, you're climaxing, like you know you're climaxing, it's like, like, ugh. Like your body's just moving, like tell you know, us, girl. like girl, you know, like your body's just like telling you, like 
you feel you can feel it my you can feel it me no and my body's telling but me my yes <laughs> i know when he's singing things i've said in this episode but i hope you love it yeah <laughs> mm, choked or spanked uh probably spanked favorite part of your body a favorite part of my body would probably be my legs you can't see them now because i have these gigantic pants on probably my legs I like them. I used to be a gymnast, so like for me, I, I take pride. I used to have really thin legs, and then I worked out really hard and just build up muscle. And I felt like for me, my legs are my favorite part. So, do you have is fit, like working out a part of your like daily routine? Yes, working out, eating healthy, trying to like maintain the body figure, and just you know a healthy lifestyle. Nice, and keeping in shape because you want to look good on camera hey. and off camera, of course, too. Handcuffs or blindfolded. Probably handcuffs because I'm kind of a control freak. I feel like the blindfolds would kind of scare me. I would still do but it, handcuffs but the handcuffs. Freak, but you can at least you can see what's going on. At least you can see. I feel like yeah, the blindfold. Yeah. You could throw me off of a cliff and just be like, "We're gonna fucking you throw me off a cliff." But I, the I feel like the control freak comes out because the Latina in me, the blindfold, it kind of scares me. But I I would still do it. But if I had to choose, I'd pick handcuffs. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever been walked in on while having sex? Um, masturbating, yes. Did you stop or keep going? I stopped. <laughs> I got, Were you embarrassed? I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. Yes, I was really embarrassed. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> now, I'm <laughs> now, now I'm not. Now you're like, ah, I keep Sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. Sex playlist. Um, I was actually listening to the car um, to like some Marvin Gaye. It's like some old school, but like I like Latin music, like like, like say Maluma, um, uh, Feliz en los Cuatro. I like when we talk about anything. It's like sexy. polygamy. You like your your octave and your voice changes. It's like this phone sex operator voice. I can't help it though. Maluma, like this is favorite song of mine in be the bedroom. It's called Feliz en los Cuatro. It's kind of like a polygamy song. Basically, like you know, I have my boyfriend, he has his girlfriend, and we all have our partners, and we all share intermingle. Basically, is that how your life works? No, it's not like that. <laughs> but I love the song though. It's so sexy. It's so intimate. It's just like it's a very it sexual. Speaks to you. It speaks to me. Yeah. Hmm. Have you ever slid into somebody's DMs? Um, let me see. Probably. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say who, but I've slid into some DMs before. Absolutely, we can't. No one can lie about that. One. Have they answered back? Of course, of course. Describe sex life with a song title. Sex life with a song title. Um, oh, I see. Uh, let me see. I'm thinking. There's so many. You, you pick one first. Let me see. I'm thinking. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, you want this? Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Jeopardy. Hey, yeah. A truth with Texas. You never know what's going to happen here at After Dark. I hope yeah. you're enjoying this episode with Nikki Delano. I know I am getting to know her a little bit more intimately, which I love your honesty. I hope you're having fun because we're not Same to the honesty. we're not to the even more like you know truth with Texas. This is just the warm up. Oh, is it the warm up? This is the warm up. I've already made you sweat. Made you laugh. Yes, you made me laugh a lot. I, I love it. All those things. So can you give me that title, or do you want to? I think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna pass on this one. one yeah i think i'm gonna pass on this one okay i'll let you do that since you've answered all of them okay, are you one of those people who like to dress up in the bedroom do you like just naked naked lingerie which are you doing um for me uh probably naked just get naked just fuck it just take off all the clothes and just go for it just go for just it. go for it all right yeah. well I think that's a great warm up. I think we're going to take a little bit of a break okay, and then we're going to play Truth with Texas. We're going to let you, you know, reset a little bit, a little bit more good. comfortable. And we're going to play Truth with Texas. Sounds good. All right. Mwah. All right, Private Talk, we are back and we are with Nikki Delano, still on our couch with Private Talk After Dark. We're about to get to Truth with Texas, my favorite game. We've got. Four cards here. They're each aces. Each suit is a different type of question. We're going to yes. get a little bit more naughtier because I know you are a naughty, naughty girl. So what is the first ace going to be, Miss Missy? I'm, I'm excited. Okay. Um, I want that one. Pick it for me. Pick it. Okay. There we go. All right. Ace of. <laughs> you can show it to me. I won't buy it. <laughs> love is a kinky question which you know we're all a little kinky here what is your favorite time of day to have sex are you a morning afternoon nighttime kind of girl 
I think uh, probably morning sex for me. I love morning sex. Just wake up and just, just wake up horny and ready to go. Yeah, ready to go. I mean, I could do. I I love nighttime too, but more probably morning sex for morning me. Sex? It's it's. Yeah. How about you? Me? Um, I don't know. I I mean, it's hard for me to get sex these days, so I don't really. I'll take it when I can. But yeah, um, if, if you have the, to pick on the regular, yeah, I, if I was having sex, I would probably say. I like morning sex too. I like to start my day off, but then With I that also, orgasm, yeah, because yeah. you know it's like you're ready to go. But I also sometimes, by achieving my own orgasm, masturbating in the morning, I will not because then I will feel like I'm not as productive. True. So I can go both ways. So I wait at night. So it just really depends. So it I was like, I don't both. really have like that. I don't have the constant D to really give you that answer. It's been a while, girl. You know, I'll get back to you with that answer. Bondage, yes or no? Are you into it in your personal life? Do you just leave it for the sex? Uh, definitely into bondage. Yeah, definitely into bondage. I love to be in control. Um, I could be sub too, but I prefer more of the dominance. So I like to dress up in so latex. So what's and in your drawer? Uh, whips, chains, latex, Say your leather. Name. Okay, uh, girl, Nikki. everything's in there. <laughs> ball gags, blindfolds. Okay, ball gags. Yeah, handcuffs. Like you name it, it's in there. I like that. I like, I definitely don't have those things in my drawer. I love that you, I don't think any man that I've ever been with would ever let me put a ball gag on him. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I don't know. Uh, the sub ones, more of the one that, But is me, that your, is that what you like? I mean, if the guy's into it, I, I'm down for it. I'm yeah. down for it. Okay. Definitely down for it. Hmm, let's see. Most number of num most number of times you've had sex in one day. We talked about overall, but what about one day? <sighs> probably in one day. Uh, maybe like maybe ten times. Ten times probably. In a ten day? times. I think that's that's about a, is a that good number. One partner. Or one multiple? partner. One partner. Okay, ten times is a long is a lot of uh, numbers. Yeah, like a lot of numbers. Probably yeah. Probably in a full day. Save where you're just like at home and and not going anywhere. Even into the nighttime, you know, not like back to back to back, but like say like in a full day, probably a ten. Twenty four hour period. Yeah, yeah, in a twenty four hour period. What type of porn turns you on? What type of porn turns me? on? Do you even on? watch porn? Um, yes, girl, girl, strap on porn. Okay. I don't know what it is about it, but I just like another girl fucking another girl. It's just something about it. It's just so beautiful and sexy and artsy and just, I don't know, that turns me on. I love girl strap on porn. Hey, it's, I like it. It's, it's, it's you know, I, I do it a lot too. I do strap on. I do strap on with girls, but um, that turns me on. It's important to do what she turns you on. Yeah. Go to our OnlyFans to check it out. Absolutely. All right, Another next card. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. A ace of... Hearts. Romantic. Ooh. Would you consider yourself a romantic? Oh, yes. I'm such a romantic. I've just, I'm all about the lovey dovey stuff, the kissing, the hugging, the holding hand. You know, some people are not into the PDA. I love the PDA. Like, if you're not showing me PDA, are you really you're into me? It. Yeah, like you, you need to like, show me the PDA. There's all of this here, and you need to love on me. Yeah, and if you're not loving on me, I'm on to the next. I'm just kidding. No, but hey, for but me, if that's your boundary. No, no, no. Standard, that's my standard. Absolutely. Like for me, I, I'm a ra I'm romantic. So I'm a hopeless most, romantic. What's the most romantic thing you've ever done for a partner? Um, okay, I've done a bunch of of romantic things in the past. Um, I've done like um like like a kind of like a trivia thing where they have to guess something and then they go on to the next place. And okay, I've so also got a little scavenger hunt, kind of like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. Or like a movie trivia thing. Um, I've also done um, like gifts, like in a box and it'll be like in a little box and like you open up that box and like, you know, it's kind of like it's it's kind of like the whole um, it'll be a little a little thing in there. But it's something very uh, meaningful about the, you know, about the thing that I love about that person. You know, like okay. I'm so very, very thoughtful. Yes. Very thoughtful. Well, let's see. Have you ever had sex on a beach? Um, I've had sex with a woman on the beach. I've never had actual guy girl sex on a beach. I've heard it's painful because <laughs> the sand, the sand gets everywhere. Yes, people say that that's a very like sexy date, and I honestly like you know honestly I don't think it's a sexy date because the sand if it gets in there it's like, gonna why bring sand to the beach baby let's do it at home yeah exactly let's fuck in the car and then we'll go to the beach yeah exactly exactly <laughs> sleep naked or with clothes on um probably sleep naked. What is a secret sexual fantasy that you have? Secret sexual fantasy. Do you have any or do you just... Um, uh, secret sexual fantasy uh, that I have. Um, when a guy is just 
takes control of me and just like basically just talks dirty to me, just told me what to do and just manhandles me. That for me turns me on a lot. You like to be I like told to be what to do. Yeah. By a man. And I feel like with the women, it's a little different. I feel like I love to be in control when I'm having sex with a woman. Now, do you have sex with women in your personal life? Um, I do. I, I like do. it. Okay. All right. How old were you the first time you had sex? 16. 16. How about you? I think uh, it was 16 going to 17 or maybe, so like maybe, it was like the summer. No, maybe it had to be like 17, like just turning 17. It's my first boyfriend. It was my first boyfriend. I was yeah. definitely not, nothing like that. It was, it was, <laughs> it was not a fun time. Not that it was, well, it wasn't a fun time. It really, I don't even know if you really, really count that. Yeah. Right. But you know, this is about you, not me. But yes, it was, um, it was like, oh, everybody's doing it. Why not? Let's try it. And yeah. then everybody was like walking in and this lake house. It was a summertime. We were all just stupid kids. Just like, and just everybody just it. was like, let's just try it. <laughs> not everybody. No, me and like this boy that I like was my friend that we like liked each other. Yeah. Uh, we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend, but we were like, so we went, we went off into a room by ourselves to try it. And then people got wind of where we were. And so they're like knocking, what are y'all doing? What are you doing? And then we're like, leave us alone. So like it, it kind of happened, but you like didn't really happen. Yeah. But like quote unquote, that would be the typical first time. Did it, did it, he actually put it in though? He tried. I don't think anything really happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think for him, he would probably call it more his first attempt, but that was my first sexual experience. Yeah. For a woman, I think it's, it's um, a lot It's a lot more but intimate. But it was definitely not intimate like that at all. And no? it was intended because I was just like, I didn't really know what it meant. Like, nobody talked to me about it. Nobody, like, I didn't know what it, like, not that I didn't know what sex was, but yeah. I didn't know that you need to, like, love someone or, like, have... Yeah like somebody like we were just literally like experimenting like kids kind of thing so it yeah. was like one of those things it's until later on did obviously that change a little bit but and then you knew what it what's the deal then you really then know, you know what like it is. oh my but god do we sex really is amazing ever know what it is <laughs> what is your biggest turn on my biggest turn on is um kissing 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 yeah it's because you're very intimate you like yeah, all the kissing. like kissing Play. I like the touching, the kissing, when a man kisses me. And if he can kiss me well, that, for me, that'll get me wet instantly. If you can't kiss, like, yeah. So if you're kissing someone and you don't get wet, will you still fuck them? Uh, <laughs> uh -huh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. If I'm not wet, no, I, I think I, I'll pass on that. So it has to be a wetness test. Yeah. You, give it at least you have to kiss me right. You have to know how to kiss. I feel like the kissing, you have to have it down packed. That's yeah. I mean, I'm definitely into kissing, but definitely there's a lot of bad kissers in porn. Yeah, there I'm is. just like, please, just let's do doggy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, in my personal <laughs> life, I won't fuck you if you kiss me bad. I won't. But on camera, I have. So that is, it's a different thing. You don't thing. really, you it's really a, can't say, hey, yeah, why yeah. won't you fuck him? Because he can't kiss good. They're like, yeah. well, is his dick hard? Yeah. Okay, then shut the fuck up. Exactly. Basically. But in my own personal life, you know, obviously, I have Respectfully, standards. hashtag. Absolutely. <laughs> it's respectfully, so absolutely. You know, nowadays, you know, may, you may not be able to say that, but that is the truth. Yeah, that's the truth, though. On camera, you'd be like, director, I'm sorry, I can't have sex with him because, you know. But in the end of the day, I could have still told you that or told anybody like, hey, I don't like the way you look or yeah. I don't like the way your eyebrows are. I don't like the way your dick is. I don't like the way your color, your hair, whatever. You could say no. Obviously, yeah. you do have a choice. Yeah, yeah. But for a reason of saying kissing, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're really, like, really OK. <laughs> Keep your mouth closed. Not, don't Sorry. kiss. That's but, why you just like, you know, always do. You have a booty. You're just like, oh, no, let's just love on the booty. Just love on let's that booty. Let's do this way. Yeah. Dude, Kiss the booty. <laughs> All right, next card. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Ace of e diamonds. All diamonds. right, so it's a spicy question. Hmm. Longest you've ever gone without sex? Probably um, eight months. Eight months. Eight months, yeah. Hitachi or dildo? Hitachi. Ever been to a swingers club? I've 
to a swingers party <laughs> before. I've been to one before. I've never partaked in the swingery. Why'd you act like you were going to cry? And you're like, <laughs> I have been there. I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. No. I've actually been Girl, to one. I've once, been to one too. But I've never partaked in it. I've been to, I wanted to experience it and see it. Yeah. I didn't actually experience it, but I got to see what it was about. So it's, it's cool. Did it's you pretty, find out what it was about? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, it was Did fun. I, I, I looked. I looked. I'm a boy. Did you masturbate in the corner? Yeah, no, I didn't get to masturbate. Did you touch yourself? No, Tell I me just the looked, truth. I was getting wet, maybe, yeah, but yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It's. I mean, it depends on where you go. I've definitely been to swingers clubs only because I've um, not for my personal reasons, but I did host a lot of things back in the day. Yeah. Um, and my ex husband partaked in a lot of things like when we would host whatever. So it was like a, it was like a group activities not as far as fucking by any means yeah. but like hosting so he was always like a crowd participant getting people to do a lot of crazy things and that's just, cool though that's cool i mean to each his own i don't think it's not cool it's not my thing but you yeah. get, you know you you understand and you see why people like things it's because they're just exploring and in a safe place in a sense like because you know, they're adult stars so they knew what they were doing and Absolutely. you know all this stuff like that but it's definitely cool to see the difference of what people like for me, I minored in sociology. So it's really big on how people are in their surroundings. And like some of the ones that we went over the different states were just different playgrounds. And it's, and it's cool to see the fetish side. Absolutely. Of why and how these people really like those things. And that's what I more get off to, not the actual act of what they're doing. I think like it's just because they're more into what they really like and they're being unapologetically themselves. Yeah. A sexual deviant however they want to which is like go have fun you know what i mean like i could definitely be in that environment for me it's like again i'm not partaking but i respect it you, I, you, know. you mentioned sociology i have a degree in forensic psychology so for mm -hmm. me like like i mentioned like i'm good at body language i'm good at reading yeah. people like for me like i have a ba in forensic psychology and so for me like i have to read you to know you to want you to, sure. to 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 just like to lust you and um, for me, like, I feel like the, the, the psychology aspect of it, it's a huge factor, too, as far as with sex with me. Like, I have to be in it mentally, well, too. Yeah, you have to be sexually stimulated. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more, like, mind-fucked. Like, it's really a thing, you know, yeah. whereas people, it's like, you, it's, you know, yes, we can physically fuck, but, like, I and have to you have to, to mind-fuck me as well. It has sure. to be on both levels. It has to be mind-fucking and women, physically. I think women in the industry that we've been in, though, and how you evolve, that's just kind of where I feel like the, the right proper evolution should go is because Absolutely. it's, um, like, again, with me, it's, like, I always compare, it's like we're sexual athletes, you know what I mean? It's not, I don't love these people, I don't like these people, whatever, I did a job, we had fun doing it, and I enjoyed yeah. doing it, but when I went, you know, you have feelings for outside people that I, I chose to fuck, not because Absolutely. I went to work to fuck, so it's a different kind of thing, so yeah. it's, you need to be stimulated different ways. Absolutely. Um, the parts are still there, but you still gotta talk to me, and that's right. why you like the dirty talk. Now, you know, that for me, I feel like I never dirty talked before in my personal life, but being in porn, it developed my dirty talk. Really, when I went overseas and, and uh, I worked for babe stations where it was oh, like okay, yeah. phone sex, basically. But it was on television. I think I did, I did Sky, too. Like I did Sky it too. TV or I forget what it was. I think it's Studio 666. 66 is what it turned yeah. into. Yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, so that made my, my dirty talking a lot better. And I got to really like it because it was already like I had the visuals in my head but now it gave yeah. me like a direction to what to say but I didn't know the language I guess so it put me into that world of knowing the acts that I was doing yeah, but actually, actually verbalizing it yeah which was cool to like actually kind of see the consumer even though some days were a little scary and some days I got really drunk and said fucked up things but it was definitely entertaining <laughs> like I'm a people I like to people watch I like yeah. to Again, the it's fun to people watch. You could uh, see aspect of like yeah. people just in general. Yeah, like I love people watching too. Like people going on their first dates. I could tell when they're going on their first date because they're so pretty shy. You know, they don't really know what to say. First dates or, are hard, man. Yeah, you, know I mean? yeah. <laughs> you could see when someone's going on their first date. You could tell, kind of. I, I've been a victim I think of I'm, a couple. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right, last card is. Okay. Ace of Spades, which is our favorite one here at the Private Talk. It's the naughty one, but we've all been a little naughty here. And we're naughty. If you're not naughty, why naughty. are you here? <laughs> after dark, we're always naughty. Yeah. Do you like to eat ass? Do I like to eat ass? Yes. Okay. Are you a man ass eater? Do you like your own ass eaten? In European men that I fucked, they love for me to eat their asses. Like, it's a big thing. I feel like American men are not into it. If you're into it, I'm going to do it. If you're into it, I'm down to do it. 
But if you're not into it, I don't. I wouldn't do it. But so you're a team player. I'm if, a team if player. If your partner likes it, you're all about it. Yeah. But if not, you're like the body language. You're like, eh, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Because some men are really vocal. Too, yeah. Some guys like, will be like, don't, don't ever go touch me. Don't I'm go back yeah, back whatever. there. Yeah. Definitely. You're like, why? What's back there? And I yeah. Just, they're like, don't go back there. Don't you know? Don't lick my ass. They're not into that thing. You know. Uh, you know. If they're into it, I'm down for it. So. Lube or spit? Spit for sure. Spit or swallow? Um, probably spit. Doggy or missionary? Uh, doggy. Doggy, definitely doggy. It does goes deep side, in. Yeah. Does size matter? Um, size does not matter. Um, to an extent. Like, average is cool. Average is cool. What's average to Average you? to me could be like a five or six inches. That's, okay. that, that's, yeah, for me it's cool. Um, sometimes bigger <laughs> is not like, always. For me it's cool, five, six. Bigger is not always better. Because sometimes, you know, it kind of, it's, it all depends. Like, if it's too skinny, it might poke you. If it's too thick, it might stretch you out and it might hurt. But, fuck, like I said, you have to be super wet to enjoy it. So, for me, size doesn't matter. If you're, like, a two-inch, I'm going to fucking cuckold you and make you my little bitch. But mm. other than that, you know, let's have fun. Do they come for you when they make you your little bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually made little guys come before. Yeah, my little cucks. I've made little guys come before. <laughs> Not me, not vaginally, but just, <laughs> but talking dirty, just making them like talk, making them my little bitches. I yeah, that gives me flashbacks. I'm like, <laughs> it gets, it's giving me flashbacks from the past. Give me definitely. a flashback of a time that there was this time that there used to be, you know, hand job scenes. Yeah, you know, which who even does that and who even mm, like who yeah. does that? But there was a time, but it was a thing. It was a hand job. Scene. There was like three or four of us girls. I don't even remember the girls. But the guy, like, the, I remember the, who the director was, asshole for doing this. But whatever. They got the pe these people from Craigslist, but you don't know it's better, but you're jerking them off, right? It was the smallest penis I'd ever seen in my life. How big was it? Like, it was just, it was just the cap, like the head. Like, it was just. <laughs> <laughs> Did he actually come, though? Yes. Okay. That's okay. the why you and you're like, like saying, I was like, yes, like he came, but it's soft. Like. I he was soft and, and came? Because I don't think you could get hard. Like, it was not big enough to be hard. I yeah. mean, maybe. I guess. Who knows? But it was just... <laughs> but it was... <laughs> I can't. I love it. I just remember being like this, like, purposely. Like, you yeah. couldn't do anything else. You'd hide it. Like, yeah. it was just like... <laughs> was he, like, and confident? There's, and there's four girls. Was he confident about his penis? I don't even remember any of that yeah. because I just could not... La a stop that this man who had a dick that looked like that yeah. I was like he had to have confidence to go into a place that gave him like whatever whatever, yeah. whatever whatever mean but I wasn't even thinking about him I was like what have I done with my life <laughs> yeah I think that's a maybe why am one, I here giving this guy who doesn't have a dick a hand job one with four hand other job bitches scene. and I don't know what I'm doing but I still stuck it in there guys and like <laughs> I love it. That's so funny. Like you mentioned, we don't really do <laughs> hand job scenes. It, that's not no. even a thing. I think I've done one, maybe one. For I don't I even know for what who. What year did you start? In I started in 2011. Are you singing for us? 2011. I'm thinking, I'm like, fuck, when did I start? Yeah, 11 do, years do ago. Do you think and sing? Are you a singer? I, no, I cannot sing. Maybe in the shower I could sing, but I'm definitely not a singer. 2011, you said? Yeah. Oh, girl, yeah, no. So probably when you got in, the hand jobs, things weren't even really a thing. I've done I one. In, I think I've done I one or two. I started 2007, technically. Okay. Really 2006, but really 2007. Yeah. So, yeah, no. So that was a thing back then, and it, worthless, because it was just <laughs> like, who goes to job? <laughs> yeah. I love it though. You know, it was to a each fun their time. own. I mean, if if it gets you off, it gets you off. You know, <laughs> it definitely didn't get me off. But you know, it was one of those days you're like, well, at least I got my makeup done. He can't come on my face. <laughs> Do you remember how much but cum did he can, come? Did he come a lot? Or was, you know, I, I doubt it. I blocked a lot of things out, not because it was a horror, a traumatic situation, but it was because it was so long ago, yeah. and I've like done so many scenes. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? like for sure. If I really thought about it and got high and thought about that specific event, I could yeah. probably tell you, but I don't know. Maybe yeah. I should spark it up again. Maybe I'll tell you at the end of the show. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. But uh, yeah, you know, that's. Mm. Have you ever faked an orgasm? Absolutely. I'm not going to lie on that one. I've faked an orgasm. Uh, yes, ma'am, I have. <laughs> yeah, I can't lie on that one. I faked an orgasm before. Yeah. Because I wanted sex to be over. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good. Oh, are you good too? <laughs> Did it work for you? <laughs> yeah, because it worked for me. 
<laughs> I love it. Your favorite place to have sex? Favorite place to have sex? Um, probably, <clears throat> I'm going to say uh, in the bedroom. I mean, I'm, I think I'm a traditional woman. Like, I mean, like I, I'm kinky, I'm crazy, but I think in the bedroom for me, it's it's more of like, like the intimacy I talk about, you know, like the intimate aspect of it in a bedroom, you know, like you take me home from a date and, you know, I'm not saying on the first date you're going to fuck me, but I'm saying it's an, it's a more it of a traditional happen. thing. Yeah. So. All right. Last question. Okay. What is a sex skill that you think is your best? Probably. Uh, da, 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 da. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, using my tongue and my lips and my mouth and talking dirty and just good, giving good blowjobs, spitting on that dick. You know, I'm just, I think my oral skills are pretty, pretty good. So yeah. your, your oral game is A+. Yeah. Plus. I think it's A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Yeah. All right. I like it. I love it. And thank you so much for sharing all of those fun gems about you. Thank I'm glad you. we got to know you a little bit more, had some fun. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to promote, anything that you have going on currently? Please yes. let us know where we can support you. Okay, guys, you guys can follow me on my Instagram <laughs> at Nikki Delano. It's N-I-K-K-I-D-E-L-A-N-O. Um, <clears throat> my fleshlight. Nikki Delano, it's Fuego and Fantastico. Mm-hmm. Fantastico is my pussy. Fuego is my ass. Get it. Um, my OnlyFans, it's OnlyFans.com forward slash Nikki Delano. Um, and then, yeah, just follow my Twitter as well. It's Nikki Delano. Um, shit across the platforms is Nikki Delano. And follow me, yeah, on there. And you can see what I'm up to, feature dancing. Um, yeah, just doing a lot of different things, projects and stuff like that. So just follow me on my social media and you can just, you can come along for the ride. Come along for the ride. So make sure you go and support her. I hope that you like this episode. Make sure that you comment down below. And make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Until next time. Ciao, baby.